Hey everyone, Lori Curtis Dunbar here. Welcome back to Painted Studio. Let me reach over behind me, grab my iPad that has been on the charger so that I can actually open it up and, well, opening it up would be a good first start. Uh, and I can then see what anybody has for questions and stuff as we go along. I know, this takes forever. Sorry about it. Just, it is what it is. <sighs> Nothing's ever that quick. You want it to be fast and it just isn't. So let's see if I'm going to show up in my own feed. I hope I am. You know, we've had some issues recently. Um, with uh, videos and things showing up the way they're supposed to when I'm doing them live. And I just love how that doesn't want to work. Okay, let's try if I go into my videos and see if I show up there. I might also show up in the, the watch. All right, uh, while, while that's going, I'm gonna see, uh, keep talking and like we're actually getting broadcast because we usually are. Um, for whatever reason, my internet has been very, very slow lately. So it takes a little time sometimes to uh, get everything up and running. And of course, if we are, my screen goes black for more than a minute, we've lost connection because that's happened a lot lately too. Oh joy, oh joy. Um, but hang on a second if we lose, if the screen goes dark and you can't see me. Um, truly, this is one of these fun things that's happening with me with Facebook right now. Um, I don't know what's going on, why I'm not showing up here. I don't know why you guys are not seeing me. Go home, let me see if I can find myself in the watch. Sometimes that's where I have to go all over Facebook to find myself. And the only reason I care about finding myself is you all has questions and it's the way I know you're seeing me. So I am hoping that I'm live somewhere at some point and I show up somehow. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what's going on. All right, I'm going to assume that we're live because if we're not, this is still recording and I will uh, post it later. God forbid, somehow I've managed to monkey this up and where I'm not live anymore. So, all right. Um, if you saw the, the title that I posted to this video, it's talking about stencils versus heat transfer vinyl adhesive, uh, the positive ne and negative weeding of those things. And again, I don't know why I'm not sure. I, I just keep trying. I keep hoping eventually I'll show up somewhere and I'll find myself so that I can see the questions as they come in because if I don't I honestly have no idea what's going on so let me flip my camera down very stiff today okay so there we are right there uh, I'm gonna open make sure I can see what you guys are seeing and I have a little iPad, uh, iPhone stand here, so hopefully um, I can see exactly how you're seeing it. I just might shift things a little bit so that it's a little easier for you all to see. Oh, no, we're back. Thank goodness. I don't know what happens. Every once in a while we blank out on the screen and then I have to go do all this adjusting again so that I hopefully am seeing you. All right. So this is a stencil vinyl. Um, this is being weeded out for a client project. And as you can see, the pattern down here is already completely weeded out. When I run these through my Cricut Maker, I keep them on the adhesive board. It makes it easy. So when we're weeding a stencil and this is the image that you wanna see, you're pulling the weeding out for this kind of an image. This is called a positive weed. Why? Because you're weeding out all the positive elements. And when we say positive elements, it means the stuff that you want to put and paint, uh, what you wanna see as the painted item. So we come back in here, we go through all of this stuff 
And as you can see, I have a little bit of tape tucked to the side over here. And um, I take all the little bits and pieces off and stick it over here. And we're gonna weed a little bit of this for a few minutes because why I'm, I'm working on it for a piece that we're doing a Chinese element kind of flair with. So we'll be using this, we'll be using these that I've already done. This is a little pagoda and Japanese, uh, Chinese lady, Chinese men, little bits of boats on water. This is part of the elements that I'm going to be using uh, in the stencil. Then they're also going to be using this. It's going to be sort of a chinoiserie toile kind of thing. And then um, I have more branches sitting on another thing. We, I, I'm building a whole design um, simply because I can. When you have a Cricut Maker, you can get files to create multiple designs. But when I'm weeding out the pieces, I'm weeding out the positive design, meaning I'm weeding out so that when I paint it, the elements that I want to see are going through the paint or going through the stencil and being painted on. I, I'm, I'm going to stutter through this. I know it. I'm sorry if I do. Uh, I truly apologized. I apologize. Oh, good. We are live because I just saw somebody liked us. So I can now find myself on here. Yay. Hi, Dolly. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank goodness somebody came on and made a comment so that now that I can, I could find my own video. I don't know why I wasn't able to find it before. I have to watch for all these things. Facebook does strange things. So again, this is the positive element, meaning this is what I'm going to paint on my surface. This visual thing is an element. When I weed out the stencil, it is the positive weed because this is what I'm weeding out is to see this part. If I was weeding out a negative, it means that I would be leaving the blue on here for all of these little design bits and pulling off the entire background. Um, I have done negative weed stenciling um, usually works for me. I use it in plasters, which means I put plaster over something and then I weed out all of these little bits and it looks like the pattern was stamped into the plaster and it's a very cool thing. Usually pick a, an, a design little simpler than this. This is, this is pretty detailed. And I'm not going to stay on here. We're not going to do this whole one for the whole time we're on, but I'd like to get as much of this done as possible because the piece I'm working on is sitting over there and the paint is curing on it. By the way, we have the most annoying freaking fly buzzing through here and he has been buzzing through on me all day. So the piece that um, I'm working on was almost an acid yellow. It's been primed and painted white. I used set coat matte metallic white. It's probably one of my favorite things because I love how opaque the white is compared to other whites. And I love that slight pearlescent sheen that the matte metallic gives me. It's my go-to white on everything. You've probably seen me use it a million times. I use it way more than I use um, a standard white paint of any kind. I just, I love that hint of pearlescence. Truly, when it's matte, you barely see that pearl in it, but it just gives the white a little glow, which I really like. And let's get that out of here. So you can see I'm, re by weeding the positive space, I'm revealing the pattern that I'm going to apply the paint to. Or I could be putting on plaster. In this case, I'm using paint. Um, and probably what I will end up doing is using the stencil and painting it a basic color. I think we're going to go with blues and maybe some golds in this. Um, but I'll paint this the basic color. And then I'll go back in and hand paint more into it because you all know I like doing that. That is one of my personal trademark things. I don't do a lot, like, 
I follow people like Brush by Brandy who do all these soft blends in the background. That's not my thing so much as I just love creating these elements like this and then hand painting back into them, adding highlights, adding shadows, adding little details. It's something I love. And it gives it a, a more complete hand painted look, I think, than just a stencil. So we'll keep going here. And stencil vinyl is very easy to cut on your Cricut cutter. Um, and the files are very, very easy to find. And of course, if you see me cutting a file um, and you want it for yourself, send me a message. I'll cut it for you. I will not weed it because you do not want to pay for the time that it takes me to weed it. But I will cut it, roll it, and send it to you so you can weed it yourself. Personally, I love weeding stencils. It's just that I have weeded four of these today. This is two of these, and then I have four cherry uh, blossom branches to weed. I have a lot of stencils, and the weeding takes a long time um, when you're doing a whole lot of detailed elements like I am. Uh, keep going here. So I probably have cut maybe a little more than I needed to cut in the elements, but I have a whole table to work with that has a flat background and two um, horizontal surfaces, both the top and then there's a little shelf on the bottom. So I want to make sure all my details are done and then I'll detail on the legs and everything to get that done. But I really love... Um, a, I love a good Asian flair on things, but um, this table has legs that are sort of bamboo carved, and that lends itself to, you know, the pagodas and the cherry blossoms and the Asian birds, the Chinese birds, really, really nicely. Um, And it gives just a wonderful kind of twall effect once I've got it, gotten it all together. You can even buy full twall patterns. Um, twall is, I'm sure you've seen it in every fabric store. It has, it's, it, they're pastoral scenes. Sometimes they're Chinese. Sometimes they're uh, shep sheep and shepherdesses. Or sometimes they're gentlemen and ladies in a picnic. And there's you know, trees in the background and bushes, and it's a repeat pattern that's very, very dense and very typically um, European looking, even when it's Chinese, um, because chinoiserie is actually a European term um, had to do with the craze for uh, Chinese-like patterns that came about when um, Europeans started trading with China for tea and part was part of the opium trade and all of that. There's a whole lot of history behind it, but basically um, tea used to come to Europe wrapped in papers with images that were obviously Chinese on it. And um, those images started a fashion craze at that period between fabrics and furniture tastes and all that. So everything sort of had this Europeanized Asian flair that was called chinoiserie. And a lot of their, this stuff that we do now that you think of as chinoiserie, often the cherry blossom branches hand painted over metallics and dining rooms and powder rooms and stuff. And it's very beautiful. It's, it's evolved over the years, but the old fashioned chinoiserie was really developed out of the um, European trade with China when things first started coming to this country. Okay, we're gonna weed out a little more. 
and I'll see if there's any questions coming up. Uh, how does a cricket work? How does this cricket work? Cr um, crickets, I think I've got plenty of videos on my YouTube channel, but maybe I'll work one tomorrow. Cricket is, works sort of like um, a combination copier and printer and cutting machine. Um, you hook your laptop up to it. There is a program that you run. Some They have a whole bunch of preloaded designs and you put different materials in it on a mat like you see this, like this blue mat, because these, these mats are adhesive. And the machine has a little cutting knife in there and it cuts the pattern for you and you set it for different materials. Like I set this for a stencil vinyl, which is thinner than some of the other vinyls or some of the other stuff is, stupid bug, stop blowing around me. Um, each material cuts a little differently. We also cut our heat transfer vinyl adhesive on it. Uh, it's also, there's also another machine called a silhouette. And these are um, more, user friend like less expensive versions of the machines that cut sign vinyl Okay, I'm back. Yay, I'm back. Sorry about that, folks. Sometimes we lose signals, and it's really frustrating. A screen goes blank. Hey, Pilar, nice to see you here. Um, so just be patient. If we the screen goes blank for you know a couple of seconds, give it a second to come back. It's something about our internet, the link to um, the camera. All of that nonsense and of course I'm sure there's a little Facebook drama thrown in there but I I will blame most of it on our internet and my camera my Mevo camera um, so what I was saying um, about how the cricket works sign makers use a, a, a vinyl cutter they're bigger they're wider usually handle vinyl about two feet wide which is very similar to the stuff that we use here very similar to the stuff that goes through a cricket or a silhouette. It's hooked to a computer, you pick your design, you enter it, you feed the material into it and let it do the cutting and when it's done it pops it out and then you have to weed it, which is exactly what I'm doing now. This is called weeding. I don't know why it's called weeding, it just is. <laughs> Uh, they're expensive. Yeah, it depends on what you use. They're, they're crickets, these silhouette cutters and the cricket cutters. Some of them are expensive. Some of them, they have smaller ones that are less expensive. Um, I use one of the bigger crickets because I use it regularly for business. So it's a, it's perfect for what I need it for. I mean, obviously I'm designing right now stencils for my clients or I use it to cut heat transfer vinyl adhesive I, that I then put on my, you know, I put it on the website, I put it on things that, you know, I'm demoing on. I then try to take the stuff that I demo on and sell it. So um, that's why you see stuff that I've made sometimes in our gift to go section on our website because I make a lot of stuff doing these lives and I gotta sell it somewhere. That's why I do our farmer's market a couple times in the summer. So I can sell all these things that I use to make for in during our lives and I'm doing demos. Um, so different cutters, different ranges. I, t I got what's called a maker at Cricut, which is one of the larger ones. But you know what? I've had people who end up buying professional vinyl cutters because they make much larger 
uh, stencils designed for wall patterning. And Come on back. Come on back. There we are. We're back again. We also have storms rolling through here, which often affects the uh, signal. So I apologize for the constant blackouts that we're struggling with today. I seem to be coming back each time, which is always good. Um, yeah, so the, the, you know, I have friends who have much bigger vinyl cutters um, and they use this to create one-time use wall vinyls and stuff like that. Very, very cool stuff. I just don't need anything that big. So I'm weeding out. I still have a whole bird and other part of this. So let me just finish this one section and then we'll go into the other thing that I'm weeding, which is a piece of heat transfer vinyl adhesive, which is a negative weed. This is a positive weed because I'm weeding out the image. We are going to leave the image there so that it can be used to transfer the pattern onto another surface. Um, I used to do a lot of stuff with positive and negative space um, in college when I was studying design. And the best way I ever heard it described was that positive space is a chair. It's a solid item. It's a chair. Negative space is if the chair was floating in the air, negative space is all the air around the chair. That's the negative space. And I think some that that is probably what made it make the most sense for me. Um, so positive space being a positive image being or a solid thing and in this case it is the space that we're creating to paint through um oh i'm gonna read a little bit of the bird because the bird's cute and everybody likes to see the birds come out let me see if i've got comments so that i can then see what you all are saying no i think we're good Yeah, Dolly, they, like I said, they, they, they're they crickets and silhouettes. There's, they're different price levels, so you don't have to really get stuck on one at a specific price. You really need to, if you're going to get one for yourself, look at the different ones and the different sizes and consider what you're using them for. Now, if you're here in the United States... You know, you buy them through Michaels. Actually, you can buy a Glowforge through Michaels now. And I have looked into a Glowforge, but since they started carrying them at Michaels, I keep hearing a lot of people having issues with theirs. And uh, Glowforge not being very responsive on their customer service. So I've held back on that. I don't see enough reason in my business to need a Glowforge, which is a laser cutter. I don't need to cut laser cut wood and stuff like that. I mean, it would be fun, but I don't, I don't really see the point of it for me. Not right now. I think I'm having more fun doing stuff like this and paint. And you all know how much I love paint because I keep finding new, wonderful paints. And, um, just in case anybody was wondering, you know, I bring in products like I've brought in the Whitsons and the Robersons from the UK um, I don't bring in products that I personally cannot stand behind, which means I've tested them myself. I, cal I color them, a, you know, I call them a, a good to great product. I think they're worth the time. I think they're worth the money. Otherwise, I wouldn't be bringing them into the U.S. Uh, I wouldn't be carrying the American made products. I wouldn't be carrying them. I think they're, I, I try to bring in here 
really top of the line products. I want to make sure that when somebody buys something from me, they're getting the best I can possibly find. And I think that, all right, so I've weeded almost, there's a little more in this space right here. Um, if I were to zoom in, let me open my thing up so I can possibly zoom in here. Pull this back a little so that you can see. Actually, that's not gonna help, you need it up there. Uh, let me zoom it in right here. You may not be able to see the lines, but there's lots of little tiny fine lines right in here that I have to um, pull all the material out. And all of this stuff like this that you see here, these are little bits and pieces of the vinyl that need to come out, okay, like that. So whatever you might see is a funny little discoloration on here is probably a piece of vinyl that's popped. So I'm gonna set that aside and keep working on that later tonight so that they're ready for me to work on my piece tomorrow. And then we're gonna come all the way back out and let's see, let me angle my camera just a little bit. And this is a piece, <coughs> excuse me, of heat transfer vinyl adhesive. This is a piece I'm working on for a little bit of a Christmas in July kind of project. Um, can't really see it because I've taped down, but this is a reindeer head right in here and here's the antlers up here and then there's a line across here and there's some Christmas ornaments hanging from it and it's an extremely detailed cut so this is going to take me a long time to weed but on this one we're doing a negative weed what we're doing is we're taking out everything every little piece of uh, heat vinyl transfer adhesive HTVA that we don't want to transfer. We're making, we're taking out all the background, we're taking out only extra stuff. So what will be left here, instead of like this one, we have all the background left behind because we're going to paint through it. This one, we're removing every little bit of the background. And what we will be doing with this is ironing it onto a surface so that the image that we have left here is the image that's transferred onto some fabric. Now I'm going to zoom in a little closer again here. I'll put that in a little closer. And usually um, when we give this to you, we will again sell you this pattern pre-cut. We will not weed it for you because if you look at this pattern, even up close, it's got lots and lots and lots of tiny detail. And this one's going to take me forever to weed. And I may stay here and do all, finish all my weeding tonight before I go home so that these items are ready to work with tomorrow. And my live will probably be me using the stencils that I've cut and then using this pattern on some tote bags. So that is really the difference. When you're weeding, doing a positive weed, you're removing something on vinyl of some sort so that the image is hollowed out of the vinyl. In this case, it's stencil vinyl so that we could put paint through it and have this image turn up on a painted surface. For our heat transfer vinyl adhesive, we're almost always doing a negative weed, meaning we're removing all the background stuff so that this image that's carved in here will be what shows up on the surface. Now you can do the reverse. Like I said, I have done this where I have left all the vinyl in here and pulled the background out and placed it on a surface and usually just troweled or painted something over it and plucked this out so that the image is then embedded. Or I could trim this into a shape so that it almost acts like a frame and I remove all of this like I would do the stencil and the background becomes part of the image on another surface. There's ways of doing it and I know I'm probably confusing some of you um, like I said, 
the best way I ever understood positive and negative space, positive and negative imagery. It helps me with positive and negative weeding is to under to think of a chair floating in space. The chair is the positive space. It is a solid object. It is a thing there. The negative space is everything, all the air around the chair. Um, of course, you know, when you've, when you've been into art classes a lot and you get a lot of chatter, I, it Okay, this is the third time that we have gone blank in this live. I really, really don't know why it keeps happening. I have to assume part of it is the weather because, you know, we don't normally have this happen this often. So if you're hanging with me, I appreciate it. Like I said, screen goes blank. Give it a couple seconds. We usually come back. Um, Maddie, yes, that's right. The, um, the Explorer is 199. Um, they're, they're different ones. They're not, they're not cheap, but they're fun to have. Hi, Muhammad. Nice to see you here. Thanks for popping in. So this is going to be this very ornate reindeer head. I am going to put it on a tote bag, I think. Now I could also create a stencil out of this as well. And what a fun stencil, I may, I may take this and run it through the cutter as a stencil so you can see the difference between a positive and negative weed, but I, I don't think I've got time to do that tonight and then weed them both out. I, I'm not that crazy, <laughs> but maybe I'll hold off on this. We'll use my other stencils. I'll run that one through the cutter and we'll compare them. Um, on a project on Friday. Maybe that's the way to go. If it would help you understand the difference between a positive and negative weed, I'm more than happy to work on that. And as you can see, stencil adhesive comes right off really clearly. Now when I run mine through the cutter, I choose the setting, stencil vinyl, but stencil vinyl is just a little bit thinner than this and also it cuts easier. This is a little bit gummy because it is a vinyl adhesive. It's kind of stretchy. Um, if I take a piece off like this, here's a piece of the back that we weeded out. You can see this is kind of stretchy. You see how I'm stretching it out? Works better on bigger pieces, but you can see I'm kind of stretching it out. Um, whereas this blue vinyl, that's the stencil vinyl. It's hard. It, it's a little stiffer. It doesn't, it doesn't pull apart that way. So the um, knife needs a little more pressure to cut with it. So that's what I give it. Uh, and as you all know, if you've ever seen me choose my HTVA files, I generally choose, I, I can cut something simple. That's not a problem, but I love these really, really intricate patterns because when they're released on fabric, they're just so pretty. Um, and I will put in, put this up in our uh, pre-cut HTVA files. Um, and I will probably also add it on as a, um, stencil for anybody who wants it. One time use vinyl adhesive. I'm not going to try to cut this in regular mylar because these cuts are so small that it will chew the mylar up. Um, that's one thing I've learned from you making these and using the four to six mil mylar that works best with a Cricut is that little tiny details like this it basically gets pulled apart in the uh, mylar. It doesn't, it's just not happy. And 
and I, I can't alter these files in a way that lets me um, not put some of these tiny details in to cut this into uh, the mylar. I do love all this little detailing. And I always have. I mean, when I was a kid, everybody else wanted really, you know, fun themed coloring books. I wanted coloring books that had all these little details in them. The kind of coloring books that now were the, the adult coloring books that were so popular during the pandemic. Um, those were the coloring books I wanted as a kid. I loved all the little details and I loved building the patterns and the colors up to see what they would finish up like. Now, as you can see, now I'm weeding out into the negative space right here. Uh, I won't go far in that. I'm just gonna pull this away so you can see a little bit of it and I'm gonna trim it off. And the reason I'm doing that is because this space is sticky and I want to keep that sticky space clean and clear to apply to the fabric. If I keep touching sticky space, like if I'm weeding and my arm keeps going over it, you'll eventually see like a cloudiness from where the skin cells stick to the vinyl and you kind of muck up the clarity and I don't need to do that. I also don't really love the feeling of my arm sticking to everything, so I'm not going to let that happen. And yes, I there's a little tiny, tiny pattern here that I'm going to pluck out all the little bits from. Usually when I do that, I just, instead of reaching over and putting them on the tape, I grab them with my fingers. And this is the part where it's really easy to grab up more of the vinyl than you want. That's why my finger's on it, because I almost pulled up the entire little branch of pattern there instead of having it stay stuck down. And right here already where my arm it was, I can see, I can actually see the cloudy print of where I just went like that. So I don't want to um, muck up my pattern. I hope you all have some fun summer plans coming. Uh, in two weeks, I am headed out to Cape Cod. Uh, you know, I usually go out there once a summer. My friend has a, a nice setup where we get to stay in either a hotel or a cottage or something for about 10 days. Uh, because of family things out there. So we go and do that every year. And I'm looking forward to just sitting. I said, I described it to somebody today as sitting like a little fat toad on my beach chair because I don't get up. I'm not working out. I'm not jogging down the beach. I'm not trying for anything. Um, I'm one of those people is, you know, my beach body is my body on, on the beach. I don't, all the back issues and stuff, the gym has not been my friend in the last few years. So and at this point, I don't care. I just want to sit and listen to the waves crash and enjoy the salt air and just be still. Now, of course, we usually run some kind of sale. Um, yep. That is blank blackout number four since we've started this. So 
I have to say that we are definitely having issues uh, <laughs> with our signals thanks to the stormy weather that we've got rolling around here this today and I think it's even tomorrow. But as you can see, here's my pattern slowly emerging. And as you can see, I weed, when I do this, I weed from right to left because I'm left-handed, so I don't want my arm constantly going over this. I want to clear the pattern and keep it nice and clean. And this is whole little area here is going to annoy the tar out of me because it's so many small little bits. Uh, but you can see I'm taking all these little almost anemone shapes out of here. And while this kind of teeny weeny weeding like this makes me want to go blind, the result is so cool. And I think maybe I will cut this as a stencil. Once I get off camera, I'll go over to my Cricut. Okay, we're back. And I am so sorry this keeps happening. I wish I could stop it. Like every time I look up, the screen has gone blank. It means we've frozen up for a second. Oh, so frustrating. Oh, I know it's frustrating for you all too. I appreciate all your time. All right, we're gonna flip this up and then I am going to open my screen up a little bit so that we're not looking right up my nose. Okay, so let me get me centered. Whoop. Let me get me centered a little bit. I appreciate every, we keep going, having our signal freeze up, so I know it's really frustrating to watch that. I do appreciate everybody coming in and giving me their time today. I'm gonna to finish my weeding up today. If you have any questions about what I was saying, and that just zoomed in on my nose. Again, signal issues. Um, if you have any questions about positive and negative space, post them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If somebody else has a better way of describing positive and negative space, positive and negative weeds, I'd be more than happy to, to read it because I'm always looking for a better way.